interactions between plants and insects are common and complex, but they are not always antagonistic like many that we saw when looking at insect herbivory. In contrast, this lesson will examine a mutualistic relationship between insects and plants, pollination. Pollination is a critical aspect in the life cycle and sexual reproduction of seed-producing plants, and is the mechanism through which fruits and seeds are produced. Pollination is the process in which pollen, a powdery or grainy substance that contains the male gametes, is transferred to the female reproductive organ, allowing fertilization to occur. Many early terrestrial plants were probably pollinated by wind and water. This includes primitive seed-producing plants, the gymnosperms, which appeared about 380 million years ago, long before flowering plants evolved. To this day, most gymnosperms, such as spruces, pines, and junipers, are still pollinated primarily by wind. Due to the uncertainty of reproductive success associated with wind pollination, many gymnosperms must produce and release large amounts of pollen. This is energetically costly to the plant, but improves their odds of successful fertilization. Pollination of flowering plants, however, is a little more complex. Pollen is produced in the anther, the male reproductive organ. Many pollen grains will never reach another flower, but after the pollen grains hitch a ride on a breeze, an insect, or another mode of transportation, some are transferred to the receptive part of the female reproductive organ, the stigma. The stigma connects to the egg-bearing structure, the ovary, in which male and female gametes fuse to form a zygote. Each zygote grows into a tiny embryonic plant that is packaged together with food and a protective coating to become a seed. Each seed that you see, like those on a head of corn, must be pollinated independently. Animals that facilitate pollination are known as pollinators, and many of them are insects. Pollination that is aided by insects is referred to as entomophily. Animal pollination is an important aspect in the coevolution of insects and plants because the process is more targeted than wind pollination. The insects travel specifically towards the plants. Therefore, pollen is more likely to reach the ovaries of a conspecific flower when it is transported by an animal. Because of this, animal pollinated plants do not need to produce as much pollen as wind pollinated plants. Although most gymnosperms rely on wind for pollination, entomophily can occur. Beetles appeared less than 100 million years after gymnosperms first evolved and were some of the first incidental pollinators of these plants. Beetles likely fed on gymnosperm pollen and inadvertently pollinated some of the plants along the way. Insect pollination is what helped to drive the evolution of the specialized reproductive structures in plants that have inspired everyone from Van Gogh to Vosmer, flowers. The emergence of angiosperms, the flowering plants, about 160 million years ago is linked to the great diversification of pollinating insects. Early angiosperms had cup-shaped flowers, which allowed the nectar to easily be accessed by foraging insects like beetles. As flowers evolved, specialist insect pollinators like bees, butterflies, and moths began to diversify as well. Today, even some fly species are involved in pollination. Only adult insects act as pollinators because they can easily access flowers by flight. As pollinators need to access nectar from flowers, many adaptations, such as a long tubular proboscis, have evolved to allow the insects to reach the resources more easily. Insect pollinators are often covered in hairs that aid in the transfer of pollen. Insects that actually feed on pollen may have specialized structures to carry this cargo, like the pollen baskets found on the hind legs of many bees. Lots of pollinating insects, like moths and flies, mimic the bright coloration of bees to trick predators into thinking that they can defend themselves with a nasty sting. Others may even be distasteful or toxic. Today, approximately 90% of flowering plant species depend on animal pollinators for reproduction, most of which are insects. Pollination is mutualistic. It is beneficial to both the plant and the pollinators. Remember that animal pollination reduces pollen waste and is more efficient than wind pollination. Furthermore, 
pollinators can facilitate pollination in habitats that lack wind, like dense forests. Pollinating insects benefit from this relationship because they gain nutrition from the sugary nectar provisions and pollen. Pollinators can be generalists or specialists. Most pollinators, like well-known species such as honeybees and bumblebees, are generalists and visit flowers of a broad range of plant species. Conversely, specialist pollinators form close evolutionary relationships with the plants they visit so that they only forage on the flowers of a few species. For plants, this decreases the chance of valuable pollen being lost to the environment or carried to the wrong plant species. Such targeted pollination also enables rare plant species to reproduce successfully despite sparse populations. The Darwin's hawk moth, mentioned in an earlier module, is an example of this type of close relationship between a pollinator and its host plant. Its 22 centimeter long proboscis is adapted specifically to reach the nectar in a single type of orchid flower, although they are able to access nectar from other flowers. Such close relationships benefit plants because valuable pollen isn't wasted, since pollinators are unlikely to visit many other flowers. The pollinators benefit in that they have exclusive access to a food source that competing pollinators cannot reach. It is important to note that there are risks associated with such a tight plant-pollinator relationship, as both species depend on the other for survival. A sudden absence of one will severely impact the fitness of the other. In this case, the risk is somewhat asymmetrical, since the orchid fully depends on the moth for pollination, while the moth is able to acquire nectar from other flowers if the need arises. Pollinators rely on a variety of cues to find a plant. The color of the flowers is an important visual cue used by many day-flying insect pollinators. Flowers are brightly colored and stand out from the environment so that pollinators can locate them easily. Flower petals may also have nectar guides, which often reflect ultraviolet light visible to insects, but invisible to the human eye. Nectar guides give additional cues to help pollinators move towards the center of the flower. Scent is another important cue insect pollinators use to locate and identify plants. Olfactory cues are especially critical for nocturnal pollinators, or those that live in habitats with poor light, such as a dense forest. Some flowers can manipulate potential insect pollinators through mimicry. This exploitation occurs in some orchids, in which the flower structure mimics the appearance of an insect, usually a female, and releases scents similar to the insect's sex pheromone. Male insects go to the flower, believing it to be a potential mate, and the orchid receives the service of pollination from the fooled male insect. Other good examples of plants that use scent to trick insects into providing pollination services are corpse flowers. When in bloom, these flowers release the scent of rotting meat, which attracts necrophagous insects. The insects visit the flower under the assumption that they are colonizing carrion. In reality, they become trapped in the flowers and emerge covered in pollen that they may introduce to other blooming corpse flowers. The necrophagous insect is therefore tricked into facilitating pollination without finding the carrion it was looking for. Such exploitation goes both ways though, and there are some cases in which the insects exploit the plants for food without providing pollination services. Certain nectar feeding insects may be too large to access nectar hidden deep inside some flowers. Instead, they use their mandibles to cut open the sides of flowers to reach the nectaries within. They never actually come in contact with the reproductive structures of the flowers, and so don't pollinate them. In these cases, the insects are referred to as nectar robbers. For example, bumblebees are often nectar robbers of flowers of blueberry plants, and honeybees are known to rob alfalfa flowers. The long evolutionary history that pollinators have with plants has led to the establishment of some fascinating insect-plant interactions. Now that you have a better understanding of the concepts and mechanisms underlying pollination, you are ready for our next lesson. There, we will learn about some of the challenges pollinators face, as well as the economic importance of insect pollinators in agriculture.